All right, Hilaria, or is it Hillary Baldwin? All right, this is the topic tonight, and it's going to take a couple twists and turns. It took me a little while to get on here tonight because I've worked on this all day, and the approach I was originally going to take kind of took a turn. Why? It's the end of the year. So I'm glad that you're here. Happy New Year tomorrow night, and let's dive in. We have a lot to cover and some new information for those of you who've been following me for a while. If you're new to the party, my name is Janine Driver. I am the Celebrity Lie Detector. I worked 17 years with the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, ATF. My dad said I turned my hobbies into a career, drinking, smoking, and shooting. I don't do any of that stuff anymore. I'm a mother of three sons. I'm originally from Boston. I live in the Washington, D.C. area, and I'm a work in progress. Let me tell you, I'm all about authenticity, and I'm going to uh, dime myself out tonight where I've been phony searching for something that you might be searching for and are you doing it in an unhealthy way so the New York Post starts off with what it's all bull Alec Baldwin's wife Hilaria or Hillary mocked for fake Spanish identity is this really just hype or is it real let's find out she's like really okay I can't wait to see you that's going to be great fantastic what time 12 o'clock my wife is from Spain mm -hmm. I moved here when I was 19 to go to NYU. Ah, and from, from my family lives in Spain. They live in New York. I moved here when I was 19 to go to NYU. Ah, and from, from my family lives in Spain. They live in New York. I moved here when I was 19 to go to NYU. Ah, and from, from my family lives in Spain. They live in New York. Yo, you're lying. She's lying. And she's lying. Hey, Jesse Itzler. A man over there, he's lying. You should do a rap for me. You know what? You're building up a bunch of lies. Straight lies. You got bad guns. I don't believe you. You got 11 cars. I don't believe you. You got the black skin. I don't believe you. You was a bug thug. I don't believe you. you uh, that's my dancing for the end of the year. There's nothing wrong with me. And, um... And I'm not going to apologize for the amount of time that I've spent in two countries. And I'm not going to apologize for the fact that I speak two languages. And I'm not going to apologize for the fact that, you know, I have two versions of my name. Ooh, let's go. We're starting hot tonight. All right. First of all, I'm coming in with no bias here. Usually I come in and I... And I say usually, because usually I have a bias. I, I follow the person. I'm the celebrity lie detector. I love learning about celebs. And usually I'm throwing them under the bus. And uh, I don't come in with a lot of compassion. Uh, although I have a big heart, uh, I think that, you know, truth is critical. Uh, you know, my five I am's who I am on this planet, or I am open, I am truth, I am generosity, I am power, and I'm a healer. I try to use my humor for healing, and sometimes backfires. And so tonight, I'm going to put me on the line here too about um, some phony stuff that uh, creeped into my life recently. So let's start off here with Hilaria doing this um, gesture. One of the great moves I like to do or tips or strategies to tell you to do is do what the other person's doing. So when you watch a celebrity or you watch a politician or an athlete and they're doing an interview, like literally feel what this feels like. So this little teeny video clip that I pulled of Hillary is 16 seconds. Okay. So everybody right now, just, just hold your head while, you know, while talking um, for 16 seconds. And I want you to feel what that feels like. Okay. So um, I have a rule, the higher the hold, more anxiety is told. So the higher we get to the top of our head, where our brain is, the more stress and anxiety is happening. So we may have seen someone like Britney Spears rubbing her leg down to her knee when she was interviewed by Matt Lauer. Her chest was hanging out, she's pregnant with their second kid, saying none of this is true, leaning forward and leaning back. That's a lower level pacifier. The higher we get to the brain, the more stress and anxiety. Now, this is for not just celebrities and athletes and politicians. This is for your children. This is for you. This is for business meetings to know that when we see something that's happening at this pacifier, uh, Dr. Paul Ekman calls it a manipulator. Joe Navarro, retired FBI agent, coined the term pa a manip uh, pacifier, which I like because newborn babies use a pacifier to comfort themselves. Uh, adults pacify by touching one piece of our body to another piece of our body. Who's on the phone? Who's on the phone? Who's on the phone? Okay, this is like the Mac Daddy of them all, right? Right outside of her brain, we see this high, high level pacifier with Hillary. This indicates to me there's high stress happening here. Not surprisingly, right? Because she's being thrown under the gun, uh, under the bus. 
is she responsible to own some of this? Yeah, was I looking for a different kind of apology? Uh, yes, I was. And so I'm gonna talk about that. I'm gonna talk about why, why might it be so hard for people to just own their shit? Hilaria was born in Spain, has it made certain to raise her children in her native language, Spanish. Okay, this is Ola Magazine. Oh boy, where do we begin? There's so much happening here. So let's just keep peeling this layer, one layer at a time. I'm glad you're here. My name's Janine Driver. Hey, let me know if you want me to come back. I used to do these every Wednesday night at 10 o'clock. I usually start between 10 and 11 East Coast time. That way the West Coast people can hop on board. They're about an hour to two hours long. Sometimes they go long, but feel free. I'll keep them up on my Facebook page and put a link here on Instagram if you're watching here or over on YouTube, if you've not already seen them, go over to YouTube, type in CLD, stands for CLD, Celebrity Lie Detector. You can see everyone from Jesse Smollett to, you know, the college scandal, uh, just a whole bunch of people are over there. Alec Baldwin's wife, Hilaria, keeps digging after getting royally busted for allegedly, um, how do you say in English, right? So, uh, when she lied about this Spanish heritage, is it really, was she lying? Was he lying? Or was it truly a misunderstanding? I think you saw that video right out of the gate where Alec Baldwin says what? Her husband says, my wife is from Spain, right out of the gate. So when we know something's not true and you say it, I consider that to be a lie. I once dated a guy who cheated on me and when he came home, we were kind of living together. Don't tell my parents. Well, my mom's passed. Don't tell uh, and he came home and I confronted him and I do this for a living, right? I've trained law enforcement around the globe. And, and he finally said to me, his name's Bill. He said, fine, if, how would a truthful person be responding? And I was like, mm, I think that's a confession. What I'm looking for here is a confession and we simply don't get it. All right, this all began, if you have not followed this and you just followed me or you wanna know what's going on in you know this, this world of reading people. Um, it all started, I think, with Amy Schumer, uh, who I love. Amy Schumer is a stand-up comedian and actress and uh, future friend, I hope. Hi, Amy. And what happened is she made a joke, right? So she put this picture of Hilaria that Hilaria's child, young child, took this picture evidently. And um, she was talking about lotion and some cream that she's connected with. And all of a sudden, Amy Schumer takes this picture and writes right down here, Jean and I want to wish everyone a happy holiday season. Enjoy it with whatever family members you're talking to this year. It's a joke. Why? Because Amy's chunky. She gained some weight after she had the baby. So it was just a joke. Hilaria was a good sport about it. Didn't quite understand the joke, evidently asked other people and didn't really understand it. But she said she likes to joke around. Now, then Amy Schumer um, called out Hilaria with regard to her Spanish accent during this whole entire drama. You can see this article was posted just a couple of days ago on the 28th, today's the 30th of December, 2020. And uh, bad things started happening. Hilaria started getting like uh, ridiculous, I was gonna say unnecessary, but ridiculous hate about having a smoking hot body. But yet this woman, I never even heard of her other than Alec Baldwin talking about Hilaria every now and then. Uh, She's all about not body shaming. It doesn't matter. I'm a thick girl. I go up and down and wait, right? She's smoking high. It's accepting all bodies and being confident. And, and she teaches classes and yoga about not just the body, but the brain and how to be happy with who you are, right? Uh, it, this fascinates me that people would hate her because she's smoking hot. All right. So if she's posted these kinds of pictures many, many times. So page six talked about this quite a bit because this goes a little deeper if you have not dug into it. The, the problem is this, and I like you, Hillary. I really do. And I'm going to say great things about you. If you stick around at the end of my presentation, I'm going to say really great things about you because I, I think you're making a difference in so many people's lives. I read today that you're going to pull down all social media. I hope that does not happen. You give all those haters power. So I hope that doesn't happen, Hillary. I hope that you stay here, Hillary, Hilaria. Uh, so, but here's what happens. Uh, this Mama Five, uh, her agent, the, the company that's, that represents her is called CAA, Creative Artists. And on their site, it said Baldwin was born in, and I'm going to, I'm not going to say this name right, but I'm just going to say Spain. You can read it right here. And then raised in Boston, but that's been removed. This is not the only place that this was. This was their original biography there, Hilaria Baldwin, yoga instructor and TV host currently on Extra. Baldwin's the director, co-owner of the instructor, you know, yoga Vida or Vida studio, probably Vida, right? If I'm using that Italian. 
studio in New York, opened in 2010, 65 minutes, and it goes on and on and on and on. And then let's scoot down the bottom here. Baldwin was born in, I can't say it, Mala, I can't say it. So I'm from, I am from Boston and I'm proud of it. So we, any letters, any words that have the letter R in it, uh, we're, we're, you know, I'm out of luck. I'm gonna pronounce that wrong. So we'll just say Spain and raised in Boston. It's not true. As a matter of fact, she said, I think she said um, in my research, and I didn't, I'm not going deep here, that she said her mother has Spanish heritage. Not true, born in the United States of America. I've come out quickly to freeze my butt off so my kids don't hear this conversation to quickly, very quickly, hopefully very efficiently, hopefully making sense to talk about um, what happened with Amy Schumer. So she posted a photo or reposted a photo of me with my baby um, talking about this really cool cream that I helped develop and I'm super proud of and really excited about. Um, and I posted a million photos like that in the past. So didn't really think that it was going to be that big of a deal ended up being a big deal. Now I love jokes. I think it was very funny. I actually don't understand it really well, the joke, but some people tried to explain it to me. So I kind of, I can kind of get it, but I love jokes. I love making fun of myself. I love when other people make fun of me. What is the point in living life? If you're not laughing, you guys all know I make fun of my husband all the time. And you're, if you're going to dish it out, you better be able to accept it back. But basically, my only concern with it is it seemed to start to spiral out of control, at least from what people are telling me. I just received a couple of calls from people, and then we decided that this was the best way to deal with it. Okay. So this is, you know, you feel like when you watch this, she's on a street, like on the curb, looking at cars going by. So her eyes are moving. I would expect this if you're sitting outside, okay? And you're married to a super famous celebrity and you're a celebrity yourself, right? So I'm gonna expect some eye movement here. When we look at her eye movement in a little bit, when she's giving her what some people are calling a bad apology, um, her eyes are really darting all over the place, not just kind of glancing, you'll see it shortly. So there's the backstory about what she's talking about. She's a good sport. She teases her husband all the time. My sister Kayleen, my youngest sister said, Janine, I love her. She talks about, you know, being healthy, mentally, physically. She's an amazing mother. She is, she goes on, her hair's a mess and she has no makeup on and she's so real. My sister Kayleen, she's my, I'm the oldest of three, watches her every day over on Instagram. So let's go now. Let's see what I put that in That person here. that if I've been speaking a lot of Spanish, I, you know, tend to mix them. And if I'm speaking more English, I, you know, doing a lot of English, then I mix that. It's one of those things that's always been a little bit, I've been a little insecure about. Okay. So I want to know, did you notice something? Okay. So when we talk about body language, it's not just our movement of our body. It's also our tone, our pitch, our voice. It's, it's our emotional intelligence. It's how it all connects together. Did you pick up on something? I'm going to shorten that video and see if you can pick it up this time. Oh, hold on. I guess it's coming in a second. Oh, so it's, com it's coming in a second. Hold on. Let me back this up. Stand by. I was reading comments. So the comment said someone wrote how to, it's May Mayorka. Mayorka, it's an island. All right, so I got distracted. I'm back. My ADD kicked in there. And that person that if I've been speaking a lot of Spanish, I you know tend to mix them. And if I'm speaking more English, I you know doing a lot of English, then I mix that. It's one of those things that's always been a little bit. I've been a little. Okay, so this this is part of the thing where her eyes are moving like all over the place. This is very Being suspicious to me. Our eyes move in different places to gather information. What I'm going to look for with a truthful statement is that the eyes go in one one direction most of the time. And this is connected with something called neuro linguistic programming (NLP). And NLP gets a bad rap. I'm not going to go into that now, but maybe I will in the future. Uh, NLP talks about where our eyes move to gather information. Now, if Hilaria is a typical right-handed person, her eyes will go up left, English, then I'm upper left to recall information like we see right here. But I don't know if she is a lefty, it could be opposite. I don't even care if someone is a righty or a lefty. I'm always looking for someone's baseline. When they're telling me a truthful story, I know what they're saying is truthful. I'm getting their baseline of where their eyes move as well as their behavior, their tone, their pitch, their breathing rate. We're gonna notice something with her breathing shortly. So this eye movement right out of the gate is suspicious to me. And what I'll sometimes do is I just watch and I fast forward even, and I don't know, I'm gonna see someone's eyes, right? Sometimes I'm noticing shoulder shrugs. Sometimes I'm noticing people swaying back and forth in their chair. I never know, but I just kind of take it and I kind of just go fast forward back and forth and say, okay, anything suspicious popping out here? 
All right, Hillary was really uh, born in Boston, went to a school in Weston, Massachusetts, not the Western part of Massachusetts, literally a town called Weston. I'm from Waltham, Massachusetts, which kisses Weston, their neighbors, but that's where all the money is over in Weston. She went to her school there, Cambridge School, private school. This is her. And some people recently dimed her out on her accent and said, hey, she's not from Spain originally and her heritage isn't even Spanish. The truth is her dad really loved Spain and did a ton of research about Spain. And, and she did go back and forth to Spain as a kid. Her parents and her brother do live in fact in Spain. She does teach her kids Spanish, she speaks Spanish. So there is some truth. And, and this is where the truth can get really slippery. And, and I'm gonna talk about why do I think she might've faked the accent and why is she not coming clean and just simply saying, I want her to say, hey, I need to do some work on me because you know what, I'm gonna go back and really look at those videos and ask myself, what was going on that day? Was I talking to someone in Spanish earlier that day or over the weekend, my parents were on the call in the green room. And so I kind of had that accent or was I craving something? You know, was I craving some type of attention or um, some significance in that moment? All right, let's put you through the test. Uh, if you have watched my show before, my name's Janine Driver. This is a celebrity lie detector. This is live on Facebook. I then put it over on Instagram and on YouTube. You tell me, okay? So I'm here on Facebook Live. I don't know if you can see my phone. I want you to vote on Facebook Live. I did put the link. It's over on Janine Driver on my page. And I put a link on my public page, which is Janine, B-L-I, at Janine, J-A-N-I-N-E, B-L-I, stands for Body Language Institute. Um, so I want you to tell me A or B, which of these two do you think she sounds like she has an accent from maybe Europe, maybe Spain? Okay, so is there an accent in A or do you think there's an accent in B? We certainly don't hear a Boston accent. So which one, I just want you to weigh in on Facebook Live. If you're here on YouTube, please put it down below or just write it down or think it in your head. Which one is the accent? Or maybe you think there is no accent. If you think both A and B sound the same, if you think they both sound the same and she just is who she is, I talk the same way. You know, I will say as a sidebar, my mother was from Canada. And when she'd go back to Canada, she'd come back and start saying some A's. Is he ever cute, eh? You're ready for, you know, you're eating a lot of food today, eh? You're hungry, eh? You know, so the A's would creep back in, but she wouldn't have every other dialect that the people in, in Sydney, Nova Scotia, and Glace Bay, down by the bay, bye, would have, right? So A or B, which one sounds like she might be bringing an accent in? And then ask yourself, hmm, why might that be? Let's see, here we go. So the first part of the book is philosophy on how to live very namaste. I have three little babies. I live kind of a crazy life between work and them and everything else. Um, so it's just, you know, how to stay calm and centered and deal with things that are coming at you. Then we can talk about food, nutrition, some recipes, and then we do work out. Married life book. is really nice. You know, it feels different. It really feels different. I didn't think it was going to be different, but it feels quite different. What's so. the thing that surprised you the most? Um, I think just the fact that it feels different, you know, I, we, we like to say husband and wife a lot. Yeah. Um, I come husband and I say, married life is really nice. You know, it feels different. It really feels different. I didn't think it was going to be different, but it feels quite different. What's so. the thing that surprised you the most? Um, I think just the fact that it feels different, you know, I, we, we like to say husband and wife a lot. Yeah. Well, All right. We played B a couple times. Let me get you one more A. Which one do you think has a Spanish accent or some type of an accent other than the States? So the first part of the book is philosophy on how to live very namaste. I have three little babies. I live kind of a crazy life between work and them and everything else. Um, so it's just, you know, how to stay calm and centered and deal with things that are coming at you. Then we can talk about food, nutrition, some recipes, and then we do work out at the end of the book. Okay. So we have people weighing in right now. So I'm so excited. Oh, interesting. Some people are very, very interesting. I wonder if some of you voted before you heard both videos. So I'm gonna play both videos again. And what I'd like you to do is don't look at the videos, just turn your head, maybe close your eyes and just listen. You know, which one would you say is European? So let's do it one more time because it's interesting. I'm getting some A's and some B's in here. Hmm. Let's try it again from the top and see if you can get it. Sometimes when we look, our visuals will influence us. So um, shut it off, shut it down. And let's see how you do with 
just the sound. Here we go. So the first part of the book is philosophy on how to live very namaste. I have three little babies. I live kind of a crazy life between work and them and everything else. Um, so it's just, you know, how to stay calm and centered and deal with things that are coming at you. Then we can talk about food, nutrition, some recipes, and then we do work out at the end of the book. So the first part of the book is philosophy on how to live very namaste. I have three little babies. I live kind of a crazy life between work and them and everything else. Um, so it's just, you know, how to stay calm and centered and deal with things that are coming at you. Then we can talk about food, nutrition, some recipes, and then we do work out at the end of the book. Oh, there's the cucumber video everyone's waiting for. Home so life the first really part of the nice. book is, you know, it feels different. It, life is really nice. It 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 life is really nice. You know, it feels different. It really feels different. But I didn't think it was going to be different. But I didn't think it was different. It really feels different. Different. It really feels different. But I didn't think it was going to be different. But it feels quite different. What's the thing that surprised you the most? Um, I think. Just the fact that it feels different, you know, I, we, we like to say husband and wife a lot. Yeah. Um, I call them husband now. I say, married life is really nice. Okay. You know, it feels different. It okay. So I've had a couple of people say, hey, which I found to be interesting. The correct answer, in my opinion, but maybe you think that she sounds Spanish here in A. Look at her apology. When she does her apology, maybe you think she sounds like she has a Spanish accent there. I don't think so. So this is the beauty of having this show live. We can have a discussion about it. Um, but I, I am getting majority of the people saying B. Um, so Aaron Doherty saying B, Susie Smith Vaughn is saying B, Robin Gordon is saying B, Mary Olson is saying B. Um, Christina Chrissy Bingham says she doesn't think either have sound like she has an accent. Hey, Audrey Stucco, my former boss is tuning in over here. You didn't weigh in, Audrey. All right, Lonnie um, Sporbet, Sporbet, I'm forgetting how to say Sporbet. Um, is saying B is the accent. Christina, I already said Christina. Peggy, how are you, sister? You didn't weigh in. Okay, so let's now look at the cucumber video. Now, this was getting a lot of hype. This is where she was on a morning show and she's making a recipe and goes to grab the cucumber and says, what, what is it in English? She is born in Boston, went to school called Cambridge School in Weston, Massachusetts, okay? Like five miles where I grew up in Waltham, Massachusetts. So I want you to imagine, how do you forget the word cucumber, okay? <laughs> you live in the United States, you get salads probably, right? You, you don't remember, what's the English word cucumber? Again, now could this potentially happen? Maybe, I think it's unlikely. I, I would have liked for her to justify it in her apology, but you know what? At the end of the day, she doesn't owe us an apology. So what? Even if she's faking an accent, why do we all care? You know, it's the end of the year, coronavirus. People are dying. My dad almost died, had the coronavirus, had to go to the hospital in the ambulance. My best friend, Dodo, one of my, one of my two best friends, Dodo, her, her cousin died in her young 30s, giving birth, had COVID, dies four months later. Like, and we're talking about someone lying about her heritage. I don't know. Uh, stick around because at the end, I'm going to turn this all around. I'm going to turn this completely 180 on what I'm talking about. Do I think she's being deceptive here? Yes. Is there a potential story here? Maybe, you know, maybe. I don't know. I don't think so. I think that I have my own opinion on why she might be faking this accent. It's not that she's faking it. I think she probably does have an accent that she uses. Maybe when she first comes back from Spain, she does. She has spent time in Spain. Um, but uh, to not know what a cucumber is, I don't know. Very few ingredients. We have tomatoes. We have... Um... Cucumber. Cucumbers. Come on. Come on, really? So if you follow this case, you've already seen this video a hundred times. If you're new to it, I'll play it one more time. Very few ingredients. We have tomatoes. We have um cucumber. Cucumbers. I can't handle it. All right. Let's listen to the apologies now. I'm going to get into learning some new um, information about reading people and what's going on. This video, I think I have it set up to play without sound, I think. Let's see, uh, I'm forgetting the order I put it in. Let's see, if there is sound, I'll tell you what we're looking for. And some things about- Okay, there is sound here. I know what this is. I want you to tell me, what do you hear in her voice that might have you say, huh, that's interesting. 
and some things about like, oh, she's a white girl. Yes, I am a white girl. I am a white girl. Let's be very clear that Europe, you know, has a lot of white people in them. And some things about like, oh, she's a white girl. Yes, I am a white girl. I am a white girl. Let's be very clear that Europe, you know, has a lot of white people in them. Oh, so this part, this is, everyone was talking about this. So I'm gonna get to the body language here in a and second. And some things about like, oh, she's a white girl. Yes, I am a white girl. Okay, so she spends, in, in my world, we, we call this smoke screening, okay? So she talks a lot about a lot of different issues and doesn't get right to the point. Um, here's the deal. If you, you know, this is my problem with Ellen DeGeneres' apology too, right? Like she was this kind of innocent bystander that she took the blunt to Ellen because of, the people in her team, the hierarchy. I know people that work for Ellen, like big, big high level people. And they told me she was mean as a snake. Like I would love in this world of transparency for to a Ellen and, and for Hilaria or Hillary to just come clean and just simply say, what I don't, this is what I don't understand. People like this transparency, right? We're attracted to it today. Why not just say, listen, I really got to think about I noticed that sometimes I use the accent and I'm wondering if those are the days where I'm really feeling like I lack significance and I just want to feel special or I'm trying to connect with a certain audience or, um, or was I talking to someone earlier that day at length about Spanish or writing a book in Spanish or listening to Spanish music all morning or, um, you know, I would like some reflection. I think reflection is an important element of emotional intelligence, right? Self-awareness, social awareness, self-adaptation, motivating others. And it's, it's not happening here. There's a lot of smoke screen. As a matter of fact, I can't even play the whole video, but let's go to, I want to show you a couple of these big things. This one, this has no, no, this has sound. Ready? Listen up. What, what's suspicious here? Hey guys, how are you? So I wanted to respond to some things that I've been seeing on Twitter. And I just want to be very clear um, just because I think that there's, is that, there's some. All right. Did you hear it? It's that sigh. Let's talk about the sigh. I think that there's is that there's some I think that there's is that there's some I think that there's is that there's some okay we get the gist I want you to send if you're live with Facebook with me right now I want you to give me you know some meaning what do you think a sigh means you know it's interesting my mother used to be a big sire and people are like you okay Lorraine so what do you think a sigh is indicating and um, I think that if you really think about it, you're probably going to get two different answers on either end of the spectrum, um, either end of the spectrum. So what does a sigh indicate? So I'm going to just give you a second um, to put it here on Facebook Live. If you're here on YouTube or Instagram and you missed the live, uh, I may be doing them every Tuesday night and around 10, between 10 and 11 p.m. East Coast time. Depends on how everything goes. I'm a single mom, so I've got to, uh, it's easier when uh, my kid's dad um, has the kids. All right, I don't get what the big deal is. Many people are bilingual, have brain farts on words. I disagree with you on this. Not a problem, Susie, you can disagree. There's, I don't know what you're disagreeing on. I just said the same exact thing that sometimes people with a different language, they can um, get a little confused. But I think to say, what is it in English? I don't know, I don't know. I, I guess maybe we do disagree actually. Um, I've had live-in au pairs from different countries for 14 years. 14 years. And in those 14 years, I think I've had 16 au pairs because some of them leave early um, because they don't like being an au pair. And I've got to tell you that, yes, do they sometimes forget a word, an English word? Yeah, but their native language is what, whatever, Spanish, Estonian, um, German, Russian, you know, whatever word, whatever language. And um, it's only has happened in my experience of having people live with me 365 days a year, other than if they go to their boyfriends, is if they're talking to someone else in their native language and then I ask them a question for a quick beat, they'll they may answer it in Spanish. Like I may say, hey, you want to go to the movies with me? And they may be like, blah, 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 blah. and I go, what? And they'll repeat it and they go, oh, sorry. And then they snap right back into English. It's not like all of a sudden their Spanish just keeps sticking around. So it's okay. You can disagree with me, by the way. This is a free show. You can stick around or you can say adios. All right. So let's see. Here we go. Oh, I want to talk about. Oh, so let me let me hold on. I want to I'm going to talk about this study here in a, in a hot second. But first, let me um, see what you guys said here. 
All right. So for the sigh, some people said anxiety. Erin Doherty said anxiety. Patty said grief. Um, Lani Lani said nerves. Um, Carrie Richardson, hey Carrie. Uh, reason to fill the space to think about what to say next. Um, she tried defending herself with the lies that she's telling. Sigh equals defeated, according to Merrill. Um, let's see, Christina Calming are trying to think of what to say next. Exasperated. She doesn't sound foreign now, right? She doesn't sound foreign in this in this video. This is what's odd. As a matter of fact, one of my au pairs is from Guadalajara, Mexico, Brenda. And she went to an English speaking school. And when she came here in the States, she's from Mexico. But because she went to English, English speaking school as a young kid, she has zero accent, zero accent. Okay. So let's explore, you know, what, what does this sigh, you know, what can it indi indicate? And then we're going to talk in a minute about different type, types of liars. There's four different types of liars. And who are the liars that we should get mad at? And who are the liars that we really shouldn't be talking about on social media? All right. When sighing happens, um, you, you take this deep breath, you're rebooting your lungs. And there was a study done with three shapes. And I'm going to talk about it in quick in a hot second. Um, as a matter of fact, we all sigh. I don't know if you know this, but the average person sighs about every five minutes. It just keeps our lungs in working order. We even sigh in our sleep. Did you know that? We sigh in our sleep. However, this stress anxiety can change our pattern of sighing, right? Because why? This, this sighing is connected with emotions. And I love how you guys were giving me feedback on Facebook Live, both positive and negative emotions. Because sighing can be either connected with feeling relieved, ah, oh, thank God that's done, or needing to feel relieved. So a study in 2009, was done with Belgium researchers and they used three different shapes and they tested 115 people. And what happened in the study is you would, they, these people, 115 people were listening to um, this loud sound, this, this like uh, white noise that would come on and off. And so one shape, the sound would come off a hundred percent of the time. So say every time you saw the triangle on the screen, that, that white noise, loud, obtrusive, irritating noise would come on. The other one, we'll say the circle, the yellow circle, it wouldn't come on at all. So anytime the yellow would shut, pop up, you might sigh because you're like, oh, thank God I don't have to hear that noise. And then the third shape, 50% of the time, the irritating sound came on and the other 50%, the irritating sound didn't come on. Well, guess what happened? People who sighed more indicated at the end of the experiment that they felt more relieved after the sigh. See, this connects the sigh with both the, the ending of having the pain, the irritation, so they would sigh at the end of hearing that sound, or sigh at, oh, thank God I don't have to have it. And they just were happy not to hear the sound. Some people will sigh with relief from the anticipation of the stress, right? So it's like, oh, thank God I don't have to do it. And here's the deal. Some of you will interpret sighing as safety, and most people, though, think when they hear someone sigh, most of us think it's negative. In particular, we think it's connected with sadness. However, that's not always the case. All right, so a study was done, another study. Let's see if I can open it up. And this was taken, if you wanna check out this information, you can find more information over on YouTube. I did not pull the video, I pulled a couple screenshots. It is why do we sigh? Fascinating video. I just shared some of the information that I learned from that video some time ago. Feel free, it's been up here for a while, since 2017. But I found it fascinating. I like to explore different parts of emotional intelligence. So a study was done in 2008 with 117 people who were given this hypothetical, hypothetical stories about someone sighing and asked what they thought the sigh meant, okay? So um, here's what happened. If the story was about someone sighing alone, people would interpret that as feeling the feeling of being more intense. So if the story was about someone, I'm just by myself and I'm like, Oh, and you heard that or heard the story, you're going to think something pretty intense is happening in my life. However, if you were told to imagine sitting by yourself in the story, imagine sitting by yourself, um, you would come up with more, most likely the more varied responses, probably depending on how you feel that day or connecting with someone you know who sighs a lot. Like maybe you were frustrated or tired or bored, right? We can't unfilter our belief system. You know, we are a product of our environment. So 
this is emotional intelligence, taking a little pause. Listen, I may not be right. I only have my opinion. And you at home may disagree with my opinion, but it doesn't mean your opinion is right. It doesn't mean that Hillary or Hilaria is lying. And it doesn't mean she's telling the truth. Really, she at the end of the day only knows the reasons. This is why I said, I would have loved to have seen her say, really, I want to think about it. I really want to, you know, I want to look at these videos and see, does my accent sometime appear and sometimes not? And then, you know, then give us that information, not a bunch of rambling like I'm doing here today. All right, let's go into the next part of reading Hillary or Hilaria. Look at her facial expression. I have no sound here. So we see a shoulder shrug. And then did you just see that little micro expression on her face? Did you catch it? I'm gonna to try to isolate just that micro expression. A shoulder shrug means uncertainty. I like to watch videos. My best friend, Terry Moore, told me about this case a couple of days ago, case or this, this hype and all over the media, I call it a case. That's my law enforcement background, it's not a case. And um, I noticed the shoulder shrug, I watched it without sound. I noticed the shoulder shrug and the, I noticed, these are the three things I noticed. The shoulder shrug, you're gonna see disgust when her lip goes up like this really quick. And I noticed her eye movements going all over the place when she did this. Disgust. So disgust is either our nose wrinkles and our lip comes up or it can be a micro expression, just the nose can wrinkle really quick or no wrinkling of the nose and the lip just comes up. That's disgust. And disgust is a tough one. You know, you're, if you are in a meeting and someone leaks disgust, that's really tough. That's tough because they're repelling something, right? So there's something repulsive that they're repelling, your ideas, your thoughts, your whatever, your, your personality. I know I'm from Boston. I'm not everyone's cup of tea. It's okay. Uh, it's just who I am. I've got a lot of, I call it moxie. And uh, I'm working on it though, because I want to bring out some more of my feminine side and tend to be aggressive. In my TED Talks, if you've ever seen them, I'm so aggressive. I'm working on it. I'm working progress here. So um, disgust though is a tough one. You're easy, it's easier to overcome anger. And I learned this from Dr. David Matsumoto who went to the Athens Olympics to prove both sighted athletes and blind athletes show the same body language and facial expressions when they win and when they lose. And that anger is an easy one to overcome because anger just means there's a goal someone has, you know, someone has a goal and the goal is being blocked. And so if someone is angry and they're raising their voice and they're like, I've already answered this, understand there's goal blockage. There's some type, they have a goal and it's being blocked. It's very easy for you then to have a dialogue with the angry person to unblock it. And anger is a secondary emotion to fear, anxiety, and sadness. Disgust, mm, this is one of the troublemakers here. So we can see disgust in all kinds of people. So I'm gonna shut down my, my camera here so you don't see me, I could see Tara Banks here. So disgust looks like this. Slightly comes up differently for some people. We see with Kanye West, his upper lip is coming up right here. We see um, a bunch of different people, Chris Watts, okay? So this is disgust. Now let's watch it with the sound, shall we? Very frustrated when reporters would report this or report that or like, you know, and I'd try to be very clear. And he'd be like, oh, so you were you were born in Spain. And I was like, all right, let me give you a spoiler alert. You're the only one who knows. And I would be laughing because it was like, anytime I would say it, people just want to label you as something else. I'm like, I'm born in Boston. It was literally the first thing that I told my husband. And yeah, I'm a different kind of Bostonian, but that's who I am. And and you kind of can't change your, your background, nor would I want to. I'm like really, really proud of who I am. And Okay, there's so much to unpack here. I think I could do a show just on this clip. All right, there's, I don't even know where to begin. I think I'm gonna start at the beginning and then break it down. I'm reading some comments here on Facebook Live. Robin Gordon says, uh, my husband is bilingual and he gets frustrated at times when he messes up. He will sigh, but this lady is coming across as fake, not sincere. Yeah, that happens. This is, I'm telling you, I've had au pairs in my house for 14 years. They live here with me, travel with me. They watch my kids when I travel. Like. I am surrounded by people from different parts of the world all the time. So it's not like I'm just, you know, talking out of my ass. Um, granted, everybody is different. Um, but usually when someone does it, like I'll even say I'm from Boston originally. And when I come back from Boston, I'll say a word like weird. I'll say weird. Or I'll say the word weird. Word. I'll say word. I say weird. Word weird. So I'll come back and I'll be like, hey, what was that word? And I go, word. Or I'll go, um, Hey, Jackie, that's not a nice word to say. And I go, word, as soon as it comes out of my mouth, I go, okay, holy Boston accent. 
And I, I like rope myself in because I can notice it, right? So I can notice it. But anyway, everybody's different. Let's unpack this. Here we go. Let me do this video again. There's so much happening here, verbally, non-verbally. Very frustrated when reporters would report this or report that or like, you know, and I'd try to be very... Okay, this is very evasive. Reporters would report this and report that. This to me is a bullshit line. It's a throwaway line. Be very specific, okay? I would say, listen, I did this one article, um, this one interview with Telemundo, and I said to the producer, hey, I, you know, blah, blah, blah. I'm from Boston, but uh, you know, even Alec Baldwin, you saw in the beginning of my whole segment here tonight, it's like my wife is originally from Spain. That's not true. That's not true. It brings me back to Brian Williams, right? I don't know if you remember him, the reporter making up, it's they're stupid lies. We, but we all tell these stupid lies. You tell them, we all tell stupid lies. And then what happens is they sometimes take a life of their own. It's cool that her family loves Spain. It's cool that she could say, listen, I may look Spanish. I'm not Spanish at all, but man, I really connect with that culture. I connect with those people. I, I spent a ton of time there. I love it. I would love to say I'm from Spain. Right, like the truth is so much cooler than the lie. When reporters would report this or report that. So evasive, reporters report this and report that, okay. I'm a different kind of Bostonian, but that's who I am. And, and you kind of can't change. Hold on, I gotta go back here again to the bigger video, hold on. Very frustrated when reporters would report this or report that or like, you know, and I'd try to be very clear Try to be very clear is suspicious to me. So, you know, you've heard of this, right? Like I, I give you a, uh, this battery and I say, try to, try to catch it, try to catch it, try to catch it. If you're trying, you fail. So uh, I try to be very clear. And then she almost contradicts herself next. Like she's like, hey, you're the only person to know, but I'm originally from Boston. I'm not under, I, I wish I was interviewing her um, because I'm not understanding that. Like, so you're not being clear. So, you know, be very clear. You know, um, it's funny when um, people tell me things like, uh, say if you're on dating, you're doing um, some app, a dating app, and you say, my friends tell me I'm funny. Well, you don't need to say that. Just be funny. And the person that's reading your profile will be like, hey, that, that girl or that guy's funny, right? So I think she's overselling us here um, when she says you're going to hear it again in a second. Really, really, really. Um, so this right here is uh, what we call in my world a hotspot. This is a hotspot. I try. Uh, my husband and I are going through a divorce right now. And we've been separated for 11 months at the 12 month mark. We were filing for divorce. I never have to say I try to be clear that I'm not divorced yet. I'm in the process of going through a divorce because I am clear. I never have to say I tried to be clear because I am clear. So the word try here is, is it's just a weak denial. You'd be like, oh, so you were, you were born in Spain. I was like, all right, let me give you a spoiler alert. Why is this a spoiler alert? So you're born in Spain. Okay, so why is that a spoiler alert? So listen to what she says though. Here's where the secret comes in. Only one who knows and we'll be laughing. You're the only one that knows. And then I'll be laughing. This in my world is calling, it's being called offering evidence. So this is like Nixon. Nixon said, I'm not a crook. Nixon said, I'm not a crook, right? We tell people who we are. We don't tell people who we are not, right? I say, I'm the mother of three sons. I don't say I'm, the mo I'm not the mother of five daughters. We say who we are. We say our truth. And it's called Miller's Law in Statement Analysis. It's that the truth is in there in the words. If you just pick apart the meaning of the words for that particular person. So let's hear that again. This is, this, this is basically as close as we're going to get to an apology here or confession. One who knows when we'd be laughing because you're the only one who knows when we're... Let me give you a spoiler alert. You're the only one who knows when we'd be laughing because it was like anytime I would say it, people just want to label you as something else. This makes no sense to me. I want it to make sense. It doesn't make any sense. Be very direct and clear. The best apologies are short and sweet. And your excuse for why you do what you do or where you may have misled people should never be longer than the actual apology. Like I'm born in Boston. It was literally the first thing that I told. And even her behavior here, I'm born in Boston. Why is that um, so dramatic, right? It's like, I, no, I'm, I'm very clear. Why did CAA say she was her, her agent? You know, why did it say that she was born 
and and they weren't the only ones. Why did her Wikipedia page, you know, what Alec Baldwin's going on, you know, the Tonight Show saying that his wife is originally from Spain. I mean, it, there's just a lot going on here. It's such a stupid topic. I can't believe I'm even talking about it, but it's, you know, it's sometimes these stupid lies are the ones we need to clean up with our own selves, right? The lies that we tell ourselves, what are the lies you're telling you? Right. What are the lies? You know, Ugh, I'll talk about mine in a minute. My husband. And yeah, I'm a different kind of Bostonian, but that's who I am. That's who I am. Shoulder shrug, which is uncertainty. If that's who you are, she shouldn't be shrugging here. Right. I'm from Boston. Look at no shrugging happening. Okay. No shrugging. Stand by. I'm a different kind of Bostonian, but that's who I am. And she had a little um, fear right there. I don't know if you saw that. So shoulder shrug and she get leaks a little bit of fear right there when her eyes bulge out like that. A little bit. See her eyes? Okay, hold on. That's who I am. And, and you kind of can't. Ooh. Can't change. You kind of can't change it. I'm a different kind stuff. of Bostonian but that's who I am. And, and you kind of can't change. See it, see her disgust. So she's on television, quoted on TV, her husband's quoted on TV, her CAA, creative artist, right? They have it. Wikipedia says she's born in Spain. She's leaking disgust and doing shoulder shrugs right here. This, this is the information, Hillary or Hilaria, a thousand times more effective if you just came out and just simply say, you know, I really wanna, I'm gonna comment on this and, you know, I wanna explore it and I'm gonna talk about it. You know, why did I allow this to happen? I was not an ATF agent. So I was an investigator for ATF, okay? So I did white collar crime for ATF. I didn't have a gun and I didn't have the authority to arrest. I had a badge, 1177. It's now in plastic that they put in some loose site or whatever it's called for me. I'm, I am clear. I write about it in my book. You say more than you think. I say I was not an agent. I was just, I was on the white collar crime. I was an investigator, also called an inspector. Um, I went out to make sure that gun dealers, that was my specialty, firearms trafficking, they weren't selling it off the books. Like anytime someone introduces me, and, and this has happened sometimes for me in the, in the media, special agent ATF Janine Driver, I make sure I hit it home a hundred times with the producer. And if, if we're doing a pre-interview or they're writing a script, I always say, no, I'm an investigator or I was an inspector. So they changed the name from inspector to investigator, investigator with law enforcement with ATF, right? So I'm very clear because special agents put their lives on the line. I wasn't a special agent. And the last thing I want people to do is to put me in a category of these superheroes that put their lives on the line. It's not that there's not a couple bad apples out in law enforcement, but man, they, they take an oath to protect and serve. So, um, I did, I took an oath too to protect and serve, but I didn't have authority to arrest. Okay. So Alec Baldwin, I'm not talking about him because, um, I was going to talk about him. And then I took a U-turn, um, because I really want to just focus on why are we try so busy trying to tear people down for some stuff? You know, what, why does the truth matter? Where are you lying to yourself? Where have I been lying to myself? So I'm not going to talk about him. I was going to compare him to Nixon because he said a similar a, a statement about uh, where Nixon's statement actually came out more truthful than Alec Baldwin's statement, which was a deceptive statement. And if you have not seen Alec Baldwin's apology or defending, not an apology to trying to defend his wife, somehow in there he ends up talking about Jeffrey Epstein had his number, but he didn't have his real good number. He had the number where they don't typically call people back. And if they do, they don't call them right away. And I don't even know how he got into Jeffrey Epstein, but it was interesting. Somehow he's trying to defend his wife. Fascinating. I'm not going to talk about it tonight, maybe in a future segment. What I want to talk about is, as we finish up tonight, is we talked about sighing. It can mean something different for everybody. It does change the pattern when there's stress and anxiety. We talked about shoulder shrugs, uncertainty, and disgust when she talked about Boston. Um, it's not a strong apology here. I hope that she doesn't take down her social media platform. I think that she's doing a lot of good. My sister loves her. She's a great mother. She's about health and wellness. I think the body shamers and people are tearing her down. I think it's disgusting. And uh, I don't wanna be put in that category. And I do think she has some emotional intelligence work to perhaps do. Who doesn't? I do for sure. Listen, I took, as I, as I spend the last five minutes with you, I took this class online with Tony Robbins recently. 
unleash the power power within upw it's called and i loved it i i have i don't even know 60 pages of notes it was unbelievable maybe more and i loved it and tony robbins i never followed him i have friends that have followed him i don't know he just i'm just a busy person he's never my cup of tea but i gotta tell you some of the stuff I knew and he just said it in a different way and it was an important lesson to learn and some stuff it was brand new I never heard it before I loved it I loved it I loved his his um, generosity helping feed so many people I just I fell in love with Tony Robbins is Tony Robbins perfect guy no now here's where towards the end there were it, it kind of ebbed and flowed with parts that I didn't like this particular part Jean Gracia Gra, I can't even say his name Gracia Graciosi, Graciosi, Graciosi. I'm saying it wrong. I'm so sorry. Uh, you know, hey, multimillionaire, very successful, helps many people, right? Gave valuable information. However, he came on this, this Unleash the Power Within. <clears throat> when he came on, he was talking about, they were trying to sell us. I don't like this part of training, but it's always an upsell. I'm not upselling you guys for anything, not selling anything, but I make a living for selling classes. So sometimes I do sell something. I'm not tonight. And uh, of course, Tony Robbins makes, he wants you to have, you know, his training so you could be the best version of yourself. And um, so he brought on this guy, Dean, and um, Dean talked about some information. And then he said something along the lines of, you know, if you register for Date with Destiny or this business program, whatever they're called, um, before this program is over, you get it at this special rate, right? You only get it here if it's at this special rate. And, and other people had said that during the training as well. The problem is I went on a computer that I wasn't watching the show on and went on to Tony Robbins site and anyone could have bought it for the same exact price. So maybe it was just a fluke, but to me, you're out of integrity when you're saying you could only buy it here, right? You're trying to use Robert Cialdini's influence, right? All these influence techniques, right? So, um, so the price was there. So that was left a bad taste in my mouth. Just make the price on the website for everyone else, hundred bucks more, 20 bucks more. It doesn't matter. So you can be in integrity. Then um, Ms. Dean said, um, you could only buy it, you know, by tomorrow before the program ends. This is the law of scarcity. Everybody knows this. If you teach sales, even if you don't teach sales, we know only three left, only two left, going fast. And Dean said, and this, this, is, this just did me in. And Jean said, um, yeah, I, I'm sorry. I told Tony to do it that way. I told him to, you know, only make it run till tomorrow night. I told Tony that and I'm sitting there and I'm saying bullshit. You know, Tony Robbins is probably at least 30% older than you and has been persuading people for decades since he was 17 years old. And you're trying to convince me, a businesswoman, an entrepreneur, uh, that you're telling Tony Robbins about the law of scarcity that, hey, do it till tomorrow night. Now, maybe let's play devil's advocate. Maybe he didn't teach him. Janine, he, he didn't say he taught him the law of scarcity. He just said he told him to make sure you you know, you say it's out, you know, you invoke or use the law of scarcity, like, hey, end it tomorrow night. Well, I still am not believing that. Even if that's the case, I still don't believe that Tony Robbins needs this guy, Dean, to tell him, you know, hey, only lasting now. How do I know this? Because I get emails from Tony Robbins from the last decade or so, because I have friends that follow him and I've signed up for it. And he uses the law of scarcity all the time. So that one statement to me was like, eh, so I left the Tony Robbins event and I was like, oh, with a bad taste in my mouth, right? Kind of like this, this woman, Hillary or Hilaria. However, the next day when it was all over, I woke up and I'm, I'm a Christian and I, I was talking to God. I do this thing called two chairs. I have a conversation with God and um, I ask him questions and I said, you know, help me. I learned, I have all this information, all these notes that are life changing and my stinking thinking is trying to kick in to say, hey, throw that away. Just stay where you are and help me with this. And God reminded me of a story that I want to share with you as I end here and then have a call to action for you at home as we go into 2021 together. When my mom died seven years ago, my sisters and I sat down and we it was very sad. We went through her belongings and her clothes and her jewelry. Maybe you know someone like my mom. Maybe your mom or your grandmother or you are like my mom. She would mix the good stuff with the bad stuff, right? She'd have some nice gold bangle bracelets she got from Aruba with my dad, but then she'd throw in a couple fake ones or she would have, you know, the cubic zirconia earrings, um, but then have her real diamond ring that my dad proposed to her with. 
And she'd say, listen, when you mix the good stuff with the bad stuff, no one ever knows, you know, no one ever knows. So when my sisters and I were sitting on mom and dad's bed after mom passed, and we took out all mom's jewelry and we were crying and remembering different pieces of jewelry and when she wore them, did we say to each other, oh, let's throw it all away. You know what? 50% of, 80% of this is just costume jewelry. It's junk. It's not even real. So let's take all of it and throw it away. No. We took the stuff that was costume jewelry that wasn't real, the fake stuff, and we put that in a pile and said, maybe the nieces will want this, or maybe my sons, you know, the grandsons will want it for their daughters one day. But we looked at mom's great stuff, the diamond ring, the wedding band, the clatter ring, right? We, we took the things that had a story connected to them, that had value in them, and we cherished them. We didn't take everything and throw it away. And so God reminded me that we all have a little bit of bullshit in us. And it doesn't mean we should be thrown away. Hilaria, I hope you don't leave social media. My sister, who's a mother of three kids, said she is a better mother listening to what you have to say. And I hope that you'll take a pause, maybe. Maybe take a pause from social media. And, and I think it would be really incredible if you addressed very specifically the issues that people are concerned with and, and kept it real. Um, oh man, you'd have, you're not, you're not being followed by millions and millions of people like Amy Schumer, the comedian, but you could be. People are attracted to people who are authentic and transparent. You don't have, it's not the eighties, nineties. We don't need you to be perfect. We need you to be authentic and real. So here's my story. Uh, Listen, I'm, I just told you at the beginning of the show, I am truth, I am power, I am generosity, I am open, I, am, I use my comedy for healing usually. And here I am a bullshit artist because I just had my hair um, colored yesterday. The curls are out, I have to buy a curling iron. But I had my hair colored. I've always wanted to have it like darker brown and then go lighter, 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 lighter. And then down here, it's like this, this like, I don't even know what it's called, like icy blonde color, okay? I, I like that look when I see it on people. Yesterday, I had all these pretty curls in there. I like that look, okay? I've wanted it I, I've, for years. And so I had someone come over my hand and do my hair. I, a, a week ago, a friend of mine, Sandra, introduced me to a filter on my phone. I know the young kids, you millennials, use the filters all the time. I don't know anything about them. Uh, I'm shoulder shrugging uh, because my uncertainty is I don't know why you need them. Okay. So anytime you shrug, by the way, you can't unnotice it. You're uncertain about something. So if you shrug, tell people what you're uncertain about. Cause I'm uncertain about a couple things. One, how come I've never known about it Two, It's super easy to use. And three, why are people using them? Just be you. Right. But no, I use this filter. I've been having a lot of fun with it. And so I put it on not only Facebook, but I put it on Instagram and people are lighting it up. Look at this. These are people's comments look good, looks beautiful, fabulous, fantastic, right? I mean, this is Instagram over here, liking it, liking it, liking it. And when I started analyzing Hilaria today and decoding it and ready to kind of throw her onto the bus for not owning her shit, or at least thinking about it and taking a pause, um, I, had to, I had to be real because going into 2021, the kind of prosperity I want is, is, not going to be linked with me being average or me trying to be someone that I'm not because I know a me being someone that I'm not is going to be exhausting to keep that up. As a matter of fact, the crazy thought I had in my head is when people saw me on Instagram and Facebook with my pretty pictures, maybe I should videotape myself with the app and then I'll insert it in celebrity lie detector live. And so I'll play it through the PowerPoint, but I'll then be live and you can hear my voice if people are asking questions. And this is what I'm thinking this morning. And I'm like, Janine Driver, this is not good. You need to do a reset, my dear, because I'm not entering 2021 full of shit. And some of you and people are coming to my aid. I went on Facebook and Instagram and said, hey, I want to do a disclaimer. Yesterday, I used this filter. Here's the real me. My sisters call me out privately on the QT and I did a video for them and I posted that. The reason I'm telling you this story is, um, yeah, everyone knows, I know tons of people that use filters. That's great. I'm called the lion tamer. I'm all about truth. Every little teeny slip of my integrity then makes other people potentially question where else might I be cutting corners with my integrity? Where else might I be faking it, being someone that I'm not? How do you know if I'm telling you the truth or not? I made a, 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 
a decision with myself a long time ago. I'm an exaggerator. I exaggerate things. I, I love your hair. It took 12 hours, right? And it really took nine hours, by the way, yesterday. So when I exaggerate, it took 12 hours. If it comes out and I go by, not, by 12 hours, I mean nine hours. I clean up my exaggerating, right? How much weight did you lose? I lost 60 pounds. And by 60 pounds, I mean 24 pounds. Like as soon as like the little teeny lie comes out because it was so instinctual growing up to, um, I don't know, be sarcastic or exaggerate. And I, it happens a lot less, but if, if it comes out, I immediately fix it. I immediately fix it because I don't want to live a life of lies. So what do I think this connects with? I think it connects with my need for what Tony Robbins would call significance. And I know I have a huge need for significance. I'm not on a stage right now speaking to thousands of people as a keynote speaker. I'm doing these online keynotes. So I'm not getting standing ovations. You know, I'm not getting people writing me letters or emails or text messages, how something I taught them changed their life or became a better person, or they were inspired to look at their world in a different way. And even in Tony Robbins program, I was trying to, my big thing was look at trying just came out. Do you notice that? Trying, cause I'm failing miserably is I, I, I am working on having less significance. And I think the first step for me is calling me out today on this, okay? Look at this, filter. My sister is Carrie and Kayleen go, hey, I love how your new hairstyle um, erased all the wrinkles in your forehead, okay? And then I posted this video also with the filter. Filter, filter, video. I'll show you the real video. Well, you can see me now, but you'll see it in a second too. All right, this is it. The big reveal. What do you think? Do you still like me with my new hairstyle? Survey? What's the survey say? You may have seen me eye blocking. As a matter of fact, I almost went like this with my hand. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's so interesting how we do that when we're full of some shame and blame, right? And we want to kind of disappear. We do that facial blocking like we saw Hilary do. So, uh, where's the real video? Yo, you're lying. He's lying. And she's lying. My man over there, he's lying. We all lie. We all lie. Uh, it's about one in nine social situations and college kids, one in three social situations. There are four different types of liars. There is the antisocial. This is the bully, the psychopath. They may think nothing of it and they could be really good at it. They might not be good at it. So grandiose, but this is, they are causing pain to you and they get no reward from it. It's just mean. That is what's called the antisocial liar. A pro-social liar at the other end is the white lies, right? These pro-social liars, these are the people that say, you look great. All right. We told my mom when she was dying of breast cancer, just before she slipped into a comatose state, she goes, I think this will be my last time I'm in Maine. And we go, no, you, you just got selected to be part of a study, mom, with this new medicine. She goes, I did, I did. And she slipped into a comatose state the next day and died a couple of weeks later. So um, these are white lies or pro-social lies. Then these two middle lies, the one that's near it, closest to the pro-social lie is called self-enhancement lie. A self-enhancement lie is what I did here, right? With this filter. It's a, it's a kind of lie that uh, makes me feel better about myself, even if it's subconsciously, but causes no pain to somebody else, right? At least not directly. It's not our intent, right? So that is a pro-social lie. You may lie about um, your clothes, or you may lie about the last time you had sex, or how many people you've been with, or you may lie about how much money you make, or you may lie about you know, wearing a mask or, you know, you may be lying about not, you know, always social distancing, not being near groups of people right now during this pandemic, who knows, right? But you have to ask yourself, okay, well, is that really though? Is that a, you know, is that a pro-social lie, anti-social lie? Is that a self-enhancement lie? Because if it sneaks over to this one, this is called a selfish lie next to the anti-social. See the selfish lie might be if you lied about being around a whole bunch of people, you said you haven't been, but you have. Because this right here, this lie next to antisocial, this little baby is called a selfish lie. A selfish lie means you're causing pain to someone else and there's a gain for you. So when people are lying and they're being deceptive, I always ask myself first, I say, okay, let's look at the four types of liars, antisocial, causing pain to others. They get nothing from it. No reward, but pain to you, right? Pro-social, 
right? Pro-social, they get nothing from it. Maybe they feel good about it, but they get nothing from it. It's really a gift for you, a reward for you to make you feel better or have less pain, right? Is it over here? Is it a self-enhancement lie? And if it's self-enhancement, I always, I, I think of Tony Robbins' six basic human needs, you know, certainty and uncertainty and love and connection versus significance and growth and contribution. You know, are they trying to get one of their basic human needs met over here with this pro-social lie they're telling? <clears throat> Or is it a selfish lie? These two guys down here, these troublemakers, the antisocial and the selfish lies, those are the ones I get really heated about. And those are the ones I'm not big on giving second chances. I'm not gonna say I never have, but I'm not big on it. And you'd really, it would take me some time because selfish liars, these are the people you, you do a bunch of work on a team. And your boss says, you did a great job, Michelle. You did such a great job. And you go, yeah, I did 90% of the work, by the way, the rest of the team did nothing. Don't say anything. And it's bullshit. Everyone had their part. You may not have seen them working as hard as you, but they had their part and you're trying to take all the credit. So you're getting a reward and you are causing them some pain. You are causing them some pain. So here's the difference, filter versus no filter last night. Look at this. This is real. So I said to myself, okay, Janine, you know, if I'm going to use a filter, put a disclaimer, disclaimer, picture enhanced by using filter. You don't have to do that at home, but I'm the truth teller, right? I'm the lion tamer. And I was mortified when this dawned on me today. <laughs> yeah, okay, this is no filter. So you can see the wrinkles, but come on. I'm still adorable without the filter. I love this hair, look how pretty it is. It's brown at the top and then cascades to like this bright, bright yellow or blonde. I love it and I love you guys. Uh, that was to my two sisters who dimed me out at home. So I put a post on Instagram, on Facebook, calling myself out, apologizing for doing this video um, with this filter. It's just not who I am. The worst lies are the lies we tell to ourselves. We live in denial of what we do and even what we think. We do this because we're afraid. Yeah, maybe we do it because we're afraid. Maybe we do it because we lack significance. I'm going to pull a couple of quotes for you. What are, where are you searching for your significance? You know, are you getting your significance by shaming Hilaria Baldwin? by being so hot and heated about this, by needing to be self-righteous about it. You know, I almost thought of canceling this when I had this um, epiphany today that why am I tearing her down? Someone on Instagram said, it's disgusting that we're out to, for blood for so many people. And, it, and that really hit me. And someone went to my defense on Instagram, thank you. And, and I appreciated that feedback because it made me think going into 2021, Listen, I want God to bring me prosperity, abundance, and you know, I want to be a magnet for money and a magnet for health and a magnet for truth and a magnet for prosperity, right? For abundance and success and joy. Um, whoever is careless with truth in small matters can be trusted, can't be trusted, it, that's cut off, can't be trusted in the bigger affairs. Uh, my, my college roommate, Dodo, one of my best friends, she's sister, sister from another mister and another mom. Dodo said to me just this morning, listen, her mother always said to her, and my mother said to me, it was a good reminder that how you do one thing is how you do everything. And so where are you cutting corners? Where are you getting your significance filled up, shaming people? Where are you not telling the truth? I'm going to invite you to confess to something. Where have you been full of shit with yourself or with others? Where have you stretched the truth? Put your comments here on Facebook or Instagram, or if you're here at live, I'll share them. If you're open to it, put it here on live and I'll share it. You know, I call myself out on my filter bullshit because um, I was getting all these comments and I got to tell you, it felt really good, but it got to the point where I'm like, I'm coming up with crazy ideas. How can I keep the filter going tonight? I can't live that kind of a life. Can you? It's exhausting. Let's clear it tonight, right? I'm doing, this isn't a shoulder shrug. This was me like trying to do a party thing, but kind of came out across as a shrug. Um, living up to an image that you have of yourself or other people have of you is inauthentic living. Living up to an image that you have of yourself or that other people have of you is inauthentic living. You know, are you being real? You know, what are you bullshitting yourself about? If you're looking for a life coach, my friend, Carrie Richardson's here. She's my life coach. Amazing. She has two great books. Her new book just came out yesterday um, from clutter to clarity. And she talks about the three reasons why we have clutter around. And it's not just clutter in your closet or in your kitchen or in your car, or in your bedroom. Even my weight is clutter. You know, I lost a hundred and something pounds a couple of years ago. I gained a lot of that back. I'm now back on the downswing. 
you know, that's clutter. You know, why is that here? Why do I turn to sugar to numb myself out instead of going to sugar? Carrie challenged me, just stop and say, wow, what's happening in my life right now that I want to numb out on? Okay, so let me know if you're looking for a life coach to call you out on your BS as my, I scratch my face. We'll talk about face scratching another time, but it's happening like crazy because anyway, I'm, I'm doing keto. I did great today yeah, for the last four days. I'm, I'm vegan keto. Let me tell you, not easy. Not easy. Often the scale's not moving as fast as I want. I think that's what the itching's about. Authenticity is a uh, collection of choices that we have to make every day. It's about the choice to show up and be real, the choice to be honest, the choice to let our true selves be seen. Brene Brown, listen, even Alec Baldwin, like his apology, I would have loved for it to just be short and sweet and say, you know what? Even I said, I think I was on. David Letterman or The Tonight Show. And I said, my wife's originally from Spain and I, you know, I misspoke. And it's funny because we tear down, you know, President Trump when he misspeaks, right? Or he's lying. So people hate his guts, tons of people. I know people who love him, right? And he doesn't, we crucify him, right? We want him to come clean. We crucify so many people that do this. And then when it's us that misspeaks, it, we don't come clean. We don't say, hey, I'm going to own my shit right now. Janine, you're right. Tomorrow, actually, it's probably already tomorrow. So you have less than 24 hours till it's 2021. Let's, you know, in the Bible, they would say, dig a ditch for what you want, right? The three kingsmen walking through the desert with their, you know, their followers and their camels, they're starving. They're, I mean, they, well, they're starving and they're, they're thirsty as all get out. They pray to the, uh, you know, prophet Isaiah, um, I, Isaiah, I think, Elijah, Elijah. I might be getting those mixed up. And he says, dig, dig up as many ditches as you can. Not a cloud in the sky. Dig as many ditches that wake up in the morning, the water's full. So whether you believe in, if you're a Christian or believe in the Bible, you just think it's an interesting story. Dig some ditches. Let's dig ditches for what we want. Maybe one of the ways we can dig a ditch is own our shit. You know, where are we not owning it? Where are we tap dancing around saying the same bullshit? And everyone knows you're full of shit. Everybody knows it. Uh, we already know it. So you come clean. Do you know it? Ah, oh, Fred Rogers. Knowing that we can be loved exactly as we are gives us the best opportunity for growing into the healthiest of people. You know, I'm looking for I'm looking for an apology from these celebrities out there. Listen, you're in the public eye. Someone, even Ellen, was a terrible apology. Um, Jonah Hill. Did you ever see his apology? Great. I did an apology show before, but ah, oh, great, great apology. Own your shit. Knowing that we can be loved exactly as we are gives us the best opportunity for growing into healthiest, the healthiest people, Mr. Rogers. Darkness, darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. Let's have he less hate. Let's have less attacking. When I do Celebrity Lie Detector Live, I got to wrap my head around it. Maybe I'm not going to do it anymore. Maybe, can I do it in a way where we all learn, uh, where I can be transparent, where I can still use my information to heal, where I can still you know, reveal the truth, where I can be open, where I can be powerful and wrap it all up in, in kindness? I don't know. I don't know. So we'll see. I don't know if I'm going to be doing another one or not. Um, but it's been fun to be here with you tonight. Hopefully you found it helpful. And to Alec Baldwin and Hilaria Baldwin, I'm so sorry you're going through what you're going through. I know you're in the public eye and people are just looking to for that next hot story. And I'm one of those people. And uh, hopefully I spoke about you and what's going on in the most, you know, most respectful way that I tried to do. I'm sure I could, uh, if I had it scripted, say it a hell of a lot better. Um, thank you for what you're doing, Hilaria. Uh, my sister Kayleen Horrigan over in Martha's Vineyard um, told me she watches your Instagram every day. She's inspired by you. Your mothering, your mothering is amazing. Your health, your wellness, and how you care about us, no matter what size we are. The last thing we should be doing is demonizing all the great that you do. Why throw away all the great that you do? Because there's a couple pieces of fake jewelry, a couple Bengal bracelets mixed in with the good stuff. Please stick around and uh, maybe as you go into 2021, revisit this and maybe look at it from the perspective of people who might be upset with uh, you not, you know, addressing the main issues here.
And maybe there's a real reason behind it, but I don't think we've heard it yet. My name is Janine Driver. This has been Celebrity Lie Detector Live, the last one of 2020. I hope and pray that God sends a team of angels around you, your family, and your friends to keep you safe, healthy, healthy and happy as you go into 2021. I'm going to look and see if there's any comments here on Facebook Live before I say goodbye. CLD is all about reading body language. It's not attacking people. I love your class. It's fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, different people. Susie, thank you for your quotes and goodness. Uh, leave some things behind in 2020. I'm a carnivore keto. Uh, so that's awesome. Keto works well for me. It's not easy as a vegan. All right. I'll read your comments. Tell us something that you've just been full of shit on and you know it. You know, what is it? If you're looking for a life coach, Kerry Richardson, check her out below. I'm sure she, I know she said some comments earlier. She has a couple slots open for 2021. Notice the scarcity effect. That guy told me to do it. Just kidding. All right. I love you. Happy New Year. Happy 2021. Maybe I'll see you next week. We'll see. Maybe I'll see you next week. Tonight, we were talking about Hilaria Baldwin. And what can you learn about yourself in her recent media crucifying? Let's crucify fewer people and let's turn inward for a little bit. How about that? Just for a couple of days. Where can you be the best version of you? At least 1% better today. All right. I love you. Hey, follow my buddy, Jesse Itzler out there. If you don't follow Jesse Itzler on Instagram, you better follow him because I'm going to tell you what, in the next 12 months, if you've never heard of Jesse Itzler, he's going to blow up huge. He has his own radio network. His wife is Sarah Blakely, invented Spanx. He is one of the most positive people I've ever met. I've already lost a ton of weight because of him and his team over at uh, 30 Days of Excellence. Check out Jesse Itzler. I think it's jesseitzler.com. Changing my life to all the people, the Kerry Richardsons, the Dominique LaFortunes, the, my sisters, Kerry Driver, Kerry Strollo, the Terry Moores, my best friend who does grief writing workshops. And, and how do you rewrite your life legacy? She has a company. We're going to do a grief writing work, workshop. I can't even say it in the next couple of days. Check me out here on social media to find out more about them. Big thank you to my dad helping me in the crisis and to my big clients over there, Maureen at Comcast and to Marsha over at Mortgage Bankers Association and Equity Prime Mortgage and Eagle and all the companies that have purchased my virtual training. Uh, you know, during COVID, my car was repossessed. I'm going through a separation, ultimately a divorce and, and soon. Uh, it's been a challenge for me. I gained a ton of weight during COVID. I've had a tough time from hell and back, negative $4,000, had to sell my camper that I just renovated in Maine. Thank you to Steve Pacell and his family for buying that camper. That money paid to reinstate health insurance for me and my kids and my husband and pay my mortgage that I was behind numerous months. So as I say goodbye at the end of the year, thank you to all the people that made my life, pulled me out of that ditch that I was in about six months ago. Man, I had, a, I had a mental breakdown on Facebook Live. If you didn't see that, oh, go watch that. Hey, we're all works in progress. Let's give ourselves a break. Own some shit below. Have a great year. I love you. Maybe I'll see you next week. Bye. It's over. Goodbye. See ya. All right. I think it's over. Oh, look at the cleavage was out tonight. I didn't even notice that. Hubba hubba. Happy New Year, everybody. wrong with me.